Thank you for joining us for today's Finance Executive Committee meeting. We will begin momentarily upon the arrival of our Chair and Vice Chair. Thank you for your patience.
All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. We have a quorum, so we're going to uh, convene this uh, regularly scheduled meeting of the City of Atlanta uh, Finance and Executive Committee. I'm Howard Shook, Chair of the Committee, and we're having sound issues again. Um, Mr. Winston is here, Ms. Collier Overstreet is here, and Mr. Hillis is here, and Ms. Bakhtiari, I know, is nearby and will be in here. Vice Chair Juan I should be joining us shortly. Um, I will make a motion to adopt the agenda. Second by Hillis. If we're ready, let's open the vote. Vote is open. The vote is closed. The agenda has been adopted. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of the prior meeting. Second by Collier Overstreet. Let's open the vote. Vote is open. All right, the minutes of the prior meeting have been adopted. Uh, we have a number of people who have signed up for public comment, none of whom submitted uh, legislation they're here to address. Uh, this committee comments only regarding items that are on our agenda. So I'm going to call your name and uh, in the order in which I have received them here. And when you come up, um, please start off by uh, saying the that you're here to address. Dewan Robinson. Good afternoon, Chair. Um, it has come to my attention that um, we've never done this before, and I'm quite sure you got a call to let you know that all the maintenance workers are here. So when you say we got to speak um, specifically to the agenda, um, this is a finance committee, so anything dealing with finance, um, I think that um, you should be able to speak to when it's dealing with finance. Uh, we have uh, maintenance workers that have, that have taken their time off to come down here to talk about the money that they are not receiving, that they once received, and I feel like no place to come to talk about money than a finance committee meeting. And if you do not wish to hear from the workers who put their lives on the line every day at the airport to talk about their money, then that's okay, but I'll let them know that because we're not here to talk about the agenda. We're talking, I mean, they're here to talk about the $4.12 or the $6.30 that they were once given um, have been taken away. The way the rule I just stated has been here for all 23 of, of my years, so nothing's changed, no goalposts have been moved. Let me ask this. Um, is, is this a, a union? No, it's not. No, it's not. Is there someone among you who's considered a, a leader or ranking member of this group who can, who can speak to this issue? Uh, each and every last man and woman would like to this. I'll, speak. That's, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make you an offer to okay. have someone come up and okay. explain why you're here. Rashida, otherwise, come on, Rashida. Otherwise, I can just follow the rules and we can. Thank you, Councilman Shook. I thank you for Thank you. Good evening. <laughs> My voice is kind of high. Let me. Um, Rashida Stevens. Good evening, Council. I'm just here um, on behalf of the Department of Aviation Maintenance Division. Um, I have 20 years with the city, formerly Public Works. Currently, um, aviation maintenance division. We we're here for you to reinstate or give us a chance. This is a finance com committee. We hope that you promptly reinstate our hazard pay, which has now been elevated to premium pay. We were cut off from premium pay. If you guys, I don't know if you guys are privy to it, but the Department of Maintenance, we were classified as frontline workers by the former mayor Keisha Bottoms, May 13, 2020. June 30th, 2021, our pay stopped just abruptly. And we have um, just found out by our airport general manager and our HR director, April Borders, 
Bill Dor and April Border said they came to the committee and they opted out. They felt that we didn't need it because um, they took all the workers up to $20 minimum wage. So we're here for you guys to um, promptly consider reinstating our hazard pay, which is now premium pay of 412, for an additional $2 and whatever since to 630. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Thank you uh, for being here. Let me go to finance and ask what the if they have any comment on the, the, the status of the item to which you're addressing. Tina Wilson, Deputy CFO. Um, as far as premium pay, um, we have to look at the policy and stated aviation that's separate and apart from the We'd have to look at the policy instated at aviation that's separate and apart from the rest of the city. Um, premium pay has uh, has continued for city employees, so we would we would need to investigate what what the policy is at aviation and come back to the committee. So we can probably get an for next uh, here, here's what I'm happy to do. I'm happy to get with the um, HR commissioner um, and and look into this matter uh, as soon as this meeting is over, so that. I can get caught up to speed on this and see and see what can be done. Um, Ms. Collier Overstreet. Thank you, Chair Shook. Um, I'm not sure if we have uh, new faces here for the uh, fi Finance Committee uh, as opposed to this morning with the Transportation Committee. Uh, the rules are governed different per committee. Um, I just wanted you guys to know that. Um, and this morning, during our transportation committee, when we heard from them, I'm not sure if you were listening in on the transportation committee, but we heard uh, from many of the uh, maintenance workers in the Department of um, Aviation about different uh, aspects of their jobs that could actually be uh, done differently uh, and better. And uh, I do believe that we are all in a stance now where we are working together. I was told by the administration that they are really well uh, ready and willing and able to work uh, with you all through these processes because your stories were very compelling. So the council members have been very vocal about what we'd like to see. Um, and now you're hearing from the finance department. Our deputy chief finance officer, uh, Ms. Tina Wilson is also uh, echoing the same thing that we're we're just ready to to understand better how we can do better as a city by the Department of Aviation's facilities um, division because it's, it's extremely important that you all remain uh, at the top of mind. Your stories really were compelling to me this morning, and so I know I'm I'm definitely uh, ready to help you all any kind of way that I can. I know my coworker, uh, my colleague, uh, Council Member Hillis is as well. So because we cannot hear from all of you all today during our finance committee, I just don't want you to think that we don't remember what we heard all morning long and that we're not here for you because I definitely uh, feel that we are. And um, I want you to continue to tell your stories, not just um, here, but as, as time goes, when we start correcting things, which I do believe we do have room for correction, I will say that also, um, I want y'all to keep in contact with us to make sure that we know what is happening with the Department of Aviation and Finance. I even spoke with the Department of Aviation leadership after the, fin after the Transportation Committee today, and I know that our, our um, finance team at is also ready to work with you all for some of the other issues that you were speaking about with the uniforms and, and quite a few things that you all uh, gave us total uh, transparency about, and I appreciate that. But I just want uh, Chair Shook to know that um, we did hear from them this morning for a couple hours, and uh, all of their stories were very valid and detailed, and we're looking at a committed group of employees that um, are fostering not just this generation, but a whole nother generation of committed 
workers to, that really do uh, make our airport shine and makes us the best that we have, uh, that, that we are on a global scale. So thank you for also being um, open to speaking with HR uh, on their behalfs later on. Thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. We've been joined by Ms. Bakhtiari. I apologize for the crappy audio here. Um, so let's do this then as I, as I read through the names. If you can just say, you know, same issue, um, because then that, that way, you know, we can know that you're here and that you signed up. Also, feel free to phone us, text or email us. Um, you're, of course, uh, welcome to come to Monday's uh, full council meeting. That's our next meeting. Um, so, I will thank you. All. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I thank you. Uh, various Roberts. Benika Harris. Thank you. LeVar Smith. Thank you. Clarence Robinson. He's left. He's left. Okay. Uh, Denise Leverett. Tracy Watson. Shedrick Watson, Gary Long, Here. thank you, Brenda Dodson, Maurice Copeland, thank you, uh, Francis Jefferson. Helton Snyder, sorry if I got the name wrong. Last name Snyder. Daryl Jackson. Thank you. Keith Shields. Carmen Denson. Alexis King. Uh, Ron Bragston. Joshua Harris. Patrick Paulette. Thank you. Uh, Derek Lane, is it? Low. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, CJ. Thank you. Uh, Jackie Pex. Thank you. Felix Benson. Uh, Kemney Burrell. Uh, Tober Bex. Sorry if I probably got that wrong. Uh, Jadamon Bell. Bell, okay. Herman Brown, Brownlee, Brownlee? Brownlee, Brownlee, thank you. Quentin Hawkins. Yeah. Lola Suleiman. Uh, in, begins with an I, last name Fletcher. Yes, thank you. Jason Johnson. Sheila Shine. Thank you. Uh, Derek DeFrenius. Thank you. Belinda Fleming. Donald Robertson, Robertson, thank you. Okay, those are all the names uh, that I'm seeing here. So we're going to keep we're going to keep this for the record. Um, I will 
Who do I get back to after I talk to the commissioner? Councilman, you can get back to Rashida. I'm glad you did that because there's been a lot of retaliation that's been going on amongst the workers, so I'm glad that you decided to do that. Um, so we gave out a list um, earlier um, so there would not be any um, fear of retaliation uh, with the airport workers. So um, thank you for that, sir. Okay. Uh, hey, go ahead. And so that's what I was going to ask if you had some more of these so that um, Chair Shook can have it and everyone else um, on the Finance Committee can actually have these names because they um, wanted to make sure that they're not going to get in trouble for coming to City Hall to talk about their, their stories, what's going on. Thank you. I've got Ms. Stevens' contact information, so that should be very helpful. Thank you. All right, presentations and reports. We have two today. Uh, let's first hear from in Invest. Oh, and we've been joined by uh, Vice Chair Juan. Uh, let's hear from Invest Atlanta, if, if you all are ready. Good afternoon. Dr. Eloisa Clemente, proud president and CEO at Invest Atlanta. Thank you for having me today. So Invest Atlanta in 2021, we launched our economic mobility strategy, which really helped set us on a path to ensuring that not only are we creating an economy that's diverse and competitive, uh, amongst the world, but it is also in Atlanta for everyone. So I just want to reiterate our commitment to this goal to ensure that we're helping to create and shape in Atlanta where all Atlantans can partake in the benefits that we're able to influence here in our city. We are now in years four and five of implementation. For 2023, we had a robust investment year. We invested over $235 million here in our city with different programming that we were to offer. As a result of that investment, we were able to leverage and produce a total capital investment of $1.2 billion as a result of all the projects that we are able to influence in the city. Now, the number I continue to watch is not only do we make that investment, but what is the impact? So looking at direct, indirect, and induced, that's a total of $2.3 billion that we have been able to produce, touch, influence here in the city of Atlanta. And of the money that we're able to directly invest, $344 million is what is determine our disinvested neighborhoods. That's 27.6 million. So if you were to look at the map that you see in the presentation, in that red, orange, yellow area is our disinvested neighborhoods. How do we do our disinvested neighborhoods? It's based on 32 metrics, federally supported metrics. For example, third grade reading level, access to a vehicle, access to public transportation. And you'll see the area where there's higher disinvestment, less access is on that south side. And so we have said and been very committed, very deliberate on ensuring that our investments hit this part of town. So for today's presentation, I want to focus on two areas. We'll focus quickly on housing and then on our tax allocation districts. So in the housing area, we were able to support 12 multifamily development projects of which we were able to produce 1,420 affordable housing units. We are keenly focused on the mayor's 20,000 goal, 20,000 unit goal. And we are, what's exciting is teaming up with our partner agency, the Atlanta Housing Authority. Of those units, 953 are zero cost burden. That means they do not pay more than 30% of their income toward rent. 
So I could talk about all the numbers, but it really comes down to the people. How are we making the difference? And so who you see here is Miss Benjamin. Um, younger Miss Benjamin on the right, she was able to be able to take advantage of our down payment assistance program. The most challenging barrier to entry on home ownership is either down payment assistance, down payment, or closing costs. So our down payment assistance really helps to ensure that people can get their first time home. Miss Benjamin on left, older Miss Benjamin, she was able to participate in our owner occupied rehab program and also from our tax payment program. In terms of owner occupied rehab program, I want to specifically thank the council as a result of your support. We were able to get the word out about applications being open. We received 1,100 applications for the owner occupied owner occupied rehab program. This is where we go into seniors, a single head of house and veterans and try to come in and do critical repairs. So think about big systems, roof. That's what we try to do to ensure that people are not displaced out of their homes here in the city. We will be able to provide this assistance to about 800 individuals. So we are off to work. We are, we've completed 277 and we look forward to completing more homes. There is, if anyone is interested, we, the West Side Heritage is currently open, which is in the uh, Vine City English Avenue at part of the city and they can apply for that application. In terms of TAD activity, we continue to very much focus on the TADs and also thank you for your support for the Tax Allocation District or TAD. We've been able to award $19.6 million to 16 projects in the TAD and this is leveraging. So as a result of our investment, we were able to spur more investment in our TADs for the amount of $99 million. So what have we been able to produce? We produced over 1,651 total housing units, and that includes single family and multifamily, of which 1,420 were affordable units. I always like to share these pictures because I always think a, a picture is worth a thousand words. The first on the left is the Bazaar Theater uh, renovation. This completion received a $2 million renovation of this historic Bazaar Theater building in downtown, right on Lucky Street. The theater, theater, the outfit has been operating in Atlanta for 45 years and in this space since 2005. This renovation included expansion of the lobby, updates to the interior, and a restoration of the exterior. A 200,000 Westside TAD grant was awarded to help improve this historic facade right in the heart of our downtown. Then we have the Oakland Cemetery Visitor Center. This is part of the historic Oakland Foundation, uh, is part of the new Oakland Cemetery Visitor Center. The new center should be completed by 2025 and will allow the historic Oakland Foundation to expand programming and enhance the visitor experience for all of those who enter the gates. The project received a 1.5 million Eastside TAD grant to assist in the construction of this center. The partnership with the city and Invest Atlanta also utilize a 1.7 million Eastside TAD funding to purchase the land for the visitor center. Then you have on the bottom left the avenue at Oakland City, which is situated on a previously vacant 1.8 acres uh, in Oakland City. The Atlanta Land Trust is under construction of a 36 unit for sale townhome project. 29 of these homes will be permanent affordable for families that are at 80 to 100% AMI. So that's around $57,000 to $71,000 a year they will be able to claim this as their new home. Phase one is estimated to be completed by the summer of this year and the project was awarded a 1.1 Beltline TAD grant. And on the bottom left is the residence at Westview. This is located in the Southwest Atlanta across the street from the Westview Cemetery. It had its grand opening at the end of January, of February this month, this year. This development is a mix of 60 apartments and rental townhomes, 54 of which will be restricted for residents earning between 50 and 60% AMI. 
In addition to the housing opportunity bond financing and Investlana, the project receive a pay-as-you-go tax increment financing from the Hallowa MLK TAD. I open it up to any questions. I just, just want to highlight I've also provided the dashboard of the tax allocation district should you have any questions. Thank you. Questions? Anyone with any questions or comments? Ms. Collier over here. Can you hear me? A okay. little staticky, but yes, we can. Right. Um, I don't think so. I don't. Um, um, thank you for um, coming before us today. I have a couple of questions. The $1.2 billion in total capital investment, um, how, how much of that was invested on Campbellton Road? I could pull that for you. I don't know the number off the top of my head, but I can find out. Yeah, I, I need to know that number. Okay. Um, um, and I mean, I, I actually want an example of what was done on Campbellton with that $1.2 billion. Okay. okay. I will send you a list of how much and a list of which projects. Okay, because I know that, you know, that particular corridor is in a corridor that has the most opportunity for the whole city because it's like a connector, mm -hmm. you know, almost like east-west connector. It could be, or a uh, Cobb Parkway. It literally goes from Main Street in the city of Atlanta all the way to Douglas. Yes. So, um, and it's, it should have transit-oriented development everywhere, not just right at Oakland. Um, it should be throughout the whole corridor. Campbellton Road is a major opportunity for the city. Um, and I'm looking at the 2023 investment map with the color-coded uh, dots for investment by category, small business, home ownership, economic development, community development, and senior tax relief. The senior tax relief, what, how does that come? Because that's about all, I, I see a lot of that in my district on this map. Um, and only one red dot is the community development, which we need desperately in my district, which we've been talking about for the last six years. Yep. So um, can you tell me what the senior tax release, what the city's, how the city's doing that? Is that a homestead? Like how, what, how are we doing that? That was in partnership with the Tyler Perry funds where he asked to pay all of the senior back taxes in the city of Atlanta for 2022. So we paid all the senior back taxes in 2023 for this 2022 year. So the city of Atlanta, did we match his dollars? I mean, are we saying that we did it or Tyler Perry did it? It was through a donation that Tyler Perry gave to the Invest Atlanta partnership that we were able to pay all the back taxes. So with the funds he gave us, we, he was able to cover all of the senior back taxes in the city of Atlanta. Okay, so if we took away those senior back tax um, dots out of my district. It looks pretty bleak. As far as, um, well, we, and, and, and zero, just literally well, one for community development activity. And I just want us to do better with that. Yes, and I appreciate the question. I have prepared and will be sending to each of the council members uh, an at exact blowout of your district with a list of all the dots of which is specific that we've been able to support so that you can get a better look. And then I can, if you'd like, I'm happy to provide an Excel list with the back end so you can see exactly what the dot is and what the project was and what the amount was. Yeah, okay, and so that red dot, that one red dot that I have, um, is, do you have any idea what that is? I'd have to go back and look, Councilmember. I don't have the, the list with me, but I'll, I'll go ahead and provide that to you by the end of the day. Okay, so that's just my ask. Um, I, I, I really want Campbellton Road to be at the top of mind because I think that's a huge opportunity for the city mm -hmm. um, in so many ways, transportation, uh, development, entertainment. I mean, the the spectrum goes from one to the, the other end. I mean, there's so many opportunities that 
could happen along that corridor if we get it right. But um, we can't continue to have just one or two dots in some place that's just so vitally critical for uh, the growth of Southwest Atlanta. Because we have to keep top of mind that the city of Atlanta goes all the way to Camp Park Place. We have to keep that top of mind. Okay? Understood. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Dr. Clemente. First off, let me thank you and your team for just the rapid responsiveness and innovation um, in terms of being able to support the impact of businesses um, on Chester Bridge. I want to acknowledge all the great work you've done and are continuing to do. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the page with investment in 2023 total. So all the impressive numbers in terms of investment, um, leveraging, businesses supported. So y'all are in the position for the city that are probably the first harbinger in terms of economic shifts um, because you're always out there, you're getting word from developers, businesses, um, communities in terms of the flows of what, what's needed. I'm kind of curious at a very, very high macro level. We're kind of coming out of a period of high inflation, high interest rates, and hopefully as things level out, um, and interest rates potentially by the end of this year, maybe beginning next year, start pulling back. What what did you observe during that period where, where those factors were going in terms of what the asks were, both for project development as well as small business asks? And are you expecting that to shift in any way? So, you know, in terms of projects, a lot of times it's bridge financing, it's takeout financing, it will be um, infrastructure investment. I, I wonder if that will change the economic environment shifts and then also in terms of small businesses I'm imagining that during that time folks are just looking for working capital but but maybe as things improve they're start, start, starting to look for actual hard capital money are you sensing that is that something that you can speak to I'm just curious so that we can best prepare as we go into FY25 budget considerations for what we invest with y'all um, where our focus should be right I'll break it off into if you don't mind, kind of sectors or areas of focus. So the first in our attraction projects that we had into the city during COVID, we did see a lot of, hey, we're on hold until we know what's happening. Uh, now, post COVID, we see a lot of businesses coming back and starting to look again and saying, activating their searches for growth and expansion opportunities in the city. So our numbers in terms of projects are at the same level they were pre COVID, but they're much smaller in terms of job numbers. We're seeing that now businesses are saying with 34, 37, uh, Bloomberg did a latest poll percent of people actually coming to work because the rest are working from home. The demands by companies in terms of space is smaller. So we're seeing that on the front end. In terms of small business, it was very much before about working capital. And so we had a tool where we were offering down payment assistance for commercial businesses. We couldn't get anyone to take on that tool. Now our pipeline is robust and we're going to run out of money. So people are trying to get in. But now the challenge is finding a place. So it's, you know, a lot of inventory is tight. Interest rates are still higher than they'd wish, but they feel like they got to get in. So they're starting that conversation. In terms of our housing projects, interest rates is now slowing down because it's now having an impact. It's harder to make our deals work in capital stack. So we're seeing ourselves have to come in with a lot more to be able to get some of these projects closed. Now, before we had inventory problems, they couldn't get raw materials or, you know, windows. Windows still seems to be an issue for some of our big uh, construction projects, uh, but they're, they're learning to deal with it. They're putting orders in a year in advance so they have time to get them. So still a lot of things playing within the market, but interest rates, it, you know, there is sign that perhaps some easing, which is good for residential development, but not on the commercial side. I don't see much activity on the commercial side. I think they're, they're waiting a little bit. Um, until those deals can happen. We're focused on residential as well. I mean, our housing, I think that, that's a good alignment. Okay, that's really helpful. Um, the other question or more, just an observation, obviously the last page, the, the TAD funds. Am I correct that 105 million of funds available for new initiatives and projects? Bottom right, very, I mean, that's kind of an eye-popping number, right? 
So that number, uh, I'm glad you brought it up, that number is there. We've broken it down by TAD. Just because the funding is there, I will tell you that we have a robust pipeline and applications in the pipeline right now that are being evaluated. So we are really being um, trying to move that available as possible, as quick as possible. Because that's the whole point about TAD is get that money back in. But again, because of the interest of you know, interest rates, challenges, construction, finding location, all of that is adding to that. But we have applications in-house right now being reviewed by the team. I'm encouraged by the fact that we've got this arsenal of resource that we can help, again, facilitate everything you're talking about in terms of appetite in the in the market. Um, again, you and I have talked about this and we've talked about it um, uh, in meetings as well, is that just I hope that you, your TAD folks, um, will stay true to the TAD objectives when they were created um, and not have a lot of scope creep and invest in things that really aren't among the uh, originating objectives of the TAD. Um, I think that's the, the danger of having these type of resources available. Um, if you lose that focus, then it gets watered down. So just to, um, yeah, like I said, a double-edged sword, but uh, appreciate the stewardship you and your team are putting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hey. I'm not sure if, does this work? Kind of working. Um, so one, thank you for the report. I was actually um, hoping that you might dive a little into what we discussed, uh, what we've discussed, and I know it might not be on the report necessarily, but the energy water efficiency improvements that we discussed, if you could kind of talk a little bit about that. Yeah, of course. So we've been very excited about our C pace. So we're calling it commercial property assessment tool that allows us to come in and to offer for the very first time businesses low interest loans. So this is one Councilmember Juan as well, where we're really trying to get into businesses and offer them a tool. This what's exciting about this is they get low interest loans that actually carry with the property. They run with the property. So it doesn't mean it's not on the good it's not on the a credit of the developer or of the entity, but on the property itself. If they apply for this tool, then they're able to use this for water efficiency, greater uh, energy efficiency, and we actually come in before and we monitor what is their energy use and water use before, and then because of this investment, what their energy will be used uh, and the water savings as a result of our investment. So we have now explored expanding that tool because right now it is really for projects that are upwards of two, three million dollars. And we know that's a certain niche of individuals. If we really want to make a difference and move the needle, we need to get to a much smaller tool. So we're exper experimenting now with the pilot program where we can do much smaller deals up lo as low as a hundred, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and we think that's going to be a game changer in us being able to produce greater energy efficiency and efficiency with water use amazing hey, would you um i know we'd spoken i know we'd spoken a little bit about uh doing a one pager is there any chance that that's been completed so we can circulate yes i will follow up on that thank you so much okay and i was looking at the tad amounts i know that Juan touched on this a little bit um i don't know a lot of it. Uh, so I was looking at the east side pad. Um, could you kind of speak just a little bit? I'm looking at what the total cash balance is versus what the preliminary funds are um, on what some of the commitments have already been. I'm sorry with the, uh, I didn't hear the question. I, it's because it's loud over here with this. I'm so sorry. I was asking, uh, yes, I will talk like this. Um, I was asking, I said, you can't take this. Uh, <coughs> kind of speak to what those commitments have already been. Which the uh, preliminary which funds? The East Side Tad. You want some of the progress projects that we funded out of the East Side Tad? I swear I can't hear. Yes. yes. Okay, I have that. No, that's okay. So we actually, in 2023, we closed 14 projects. 
Um, thank you. And in 2023, we approved 19 projects for a total of 33 projects. The completed projects out of the east side TAD include the Stitch Public Infrastructure. So it's exciting to see that they just got their big award. This is one where as a result of us being able to come in, they were able to put the foundation together, the information that was needed to then go after big federal dollars and congratulations to them, they got it. Uh, Two Peachtree, 14 Marietta, Henderson Place, Sweet Auburn Grand, South Downtown Redevelopment, um, the, the Ascension Fund, Macaulay Park, Macaulay Senior Phase Two, Prince Hall Masonic Lodge, uh, 395 Edgewood, Historic Oakland Foundation, and Wheat Street Education Building. Great. So the Wheat Street Education Building is moving forward. Yeah, they they got. Uh, is that? 0.15 is that 1.5? Oh, it's 150,000. They got 150,000. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And sorry. No, yeah, no apologies. No apologies needed from you. Not at all. Thank you very much. That concludes my question, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you. Um, I don't see anyone else with any questions. I'll, again, just apologize for the Thomas Edison S. <laughs> audio quality here. Uh, I received a note saying that. Someone will come in here to effect a temporary workaround in the wake of tomorrow's ZRB hearing. So I guess we're just going to have to get through this meeting as is. But thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we did not technically adopt an agenda with the second um, presentation. Um, so if there's no objections, uh, let's go ahead now and hear from get an update on what's going on at the uh, Atlanta Municipal Market. I see David Bennett uh, is here. Um, I was able to go out there fairly recently and uh, got a tour and sat down uh, with David. And he walked me and, and others uh, through uh, his findings as well as his tentative plans uh, this to, to get back on track. Cool. So, uh, Mr. Bennett, take it away. I thought it would be appropriate here, given all the media interest that this created uh, when the uh, audit was first released. Thank you for having me. My name is David Bennett. I am the executive director of the Atlanta Municipal Market. I've been in place six months. I'm here to give you an update on what I've learned and what I've found out over that time and what we've done to sort of improve situation at the market. Uh, I want to first start by sort of setting the scene. Um, when I started, um, I replaced Pam Joyner, who'd been in place for almost 20 years. Uh, Pam unexpectedly died, um, leaving behind um, a sort of tragic situation in the market where all the things that she knew all disappeared when she died. And so there was no transition plan, no, no thought that she was not coming back to work. And so everything that she knew disappeared with her when she died. So. Um, the market today is really sort of a start over situation because we're having to relearn everything that was done over a long period of time. And through that, then we're reconsidering everything that would go on in the market, um, it, which is honestly needed after all that time. Um, we have a goal in um, creating a best in class public market, uh, one that everybody in the city can be proud of. So let me start with the actual quote. I, I did advise uh, your chairman that I would be out in under five minutes and so I'm going to uh, stick to his uh, goal of five minutes. Uh, so here we go. Uh, so if you leave today with only one message, please remember this. The public is now and always has been, the, the market has always been a public service. It is not a traditional real estate investment for the city. Our mission detailed in this slide is unchanged over the past century, and it's important. The market was created for the reasons you see on this slide. The market eliminates an Atlanta food desert, provides healthy food choices for often underserved communities, provides a critically important low barrier to entry option for the creation of small business businesses that otherwise would have no place to go. It has been the founding location for businesses such as Grindhouse Killer Burgers, Bell Street Burritos, Sweet Auburn Barbecue, uh, and Arepa Mia. It also has a substantial economic impact 
by supporting 150 jobs, dozens of small businesses, and generating $8 million in annual sales. Uh, that mission continues today. So what this slide tells you is that what we learned over the last six months, we've done a deep dive into the market, is that um, the market struggles financially. You can see that here that the market loses money each month, and it has for a long time. Uh, each month, we bill tenants about $100,000. We only collect about $85,000 of that, and we are billed by contractors and vendors at the market a little over $100,000. The market manages that on a normal day by doing what most people would do in that situation, which is not paying all of our bills. And so in a normal given moment in time, the market has somewhere between $150,000 and $200,000 of late debt floating around out there. Payments to contractors have not been made. Secondarily, building expenses are also killing the market. The building is 100 years old. It hasn't had a capital investment since 1993 when the city last invested. Um, in the short time that I've been there, we've made more than $75,000 in plumbing repairs alone. We have another thirty dollars to $50,000 of similar repairs floating around out there unmade right now. Um, we average about $200,000 a year in cost to run the building. The building is old, it's in bad shape, it needs a lot of capital work, and it's expensive to run. Um, we have no capital fund or even building maintenance department to do that work. And so all that work comes directly from our operating fund, which obviously uh, imperils what we can do to run the market on a normal day. So this slide shows you that operating expenses, like utilities and CAM, uh, are billed to tenants at a level that is less than what the market pays to provide those services. The fees are supposed to be a direct pass-through, so a tenant pays the tenant cost for the entire market should just be transferred directly to tenants. Yet the market loses money on both. The difference is so great that it's going to take us years to bring those fees to the level that the tenants can bear to pay them. The red columns on this slide uh, show you the gap between um, what the market is billed and what we actually collect from our tenants. Uh, over the past six months, uh, the market has made substantial, often painful changes to right the ship. This slide shows you some of those. For example, um, tenants and customers have both been asked to pay more. Free parking has been eliminated. Uh, longer term parking costs have also been increased. Next month, a new higher rent structure goes in place. That rent structure um, includes a maximum allowed by the leases, 3% rent increase for all tenants. It also includes raises to um, all the fees I mentioned earlier, CAM, utilities, and even storage. The goal for all that, that change is to have each tenant increase what they pay to the market 10%. Beyond that, we also moved to emphasize collections, uh, which is something the market had not traditionally done. It had not put a lot of effort into making people stay current. And so when I started, a number of tenants were well behind to the market. Uh, at the same time, we have, um, because of that, now filed um, evictions on a couple of tenants. And there are two or three more that are sort of in the pipeline in the same place. They've already been noticed that the, the relationship with the market is needs to end, and that's moving forward. Some of these changes, not surprisingly then, have been somewhat controversial at the market. Uh, many of the tenants had no idea that the market's finances suffered the way they do. Um, through the sort of transparency that um, we've established since I've been there, most all the tenants are pretty clear on that now. The changes outlined here um, are designed with one thing in mind. They're designed to create the first cash flow positive market months at the market in a, in a number of months, uh, years actually. Uh, I'm hopeful that once the new rent structure is in place, we'll, by May and June, we'll actually see cash flow positive months at the market. But these changes only help stop the bleeding. They do not improve the market. We're going to be asking you guys to help do that. Uh, so. Come on. Uh, so all this leads us to 
the market asking the city for two kinds of help. One, first, we'd like the city to budget deem to pay for the, mar the market's building operations, both capital um, and regular maintenance. Two, uh, we're going to be asking for, uh, through the mayor's office, for a set aside for a modest operating subsidy to help the market serve the city for generations to come. What you'll get if you do that is this. Um, the market will have the ability to develop new revenue initiatives. We are already working on plans to shift all leases to revenue share, build an events business, take over equipment maintenance, monetize the outdoor patio, improve table vending pop-ups, look at opportunities for sponsorship, advertising, and philanthropy. We're also planning to modernize the operating system because as it stands now, the market does not have the capacity through its operating systems or manpower to even drive the change that we're talking about here. Um, we would complete a five-year strategic plan to guide us into the future, expand operating hours. Operating hour expansion would allow us to uh, create a path for tenants to um, increase their revenues, thus paying more rent, and bring new customers to the market. And finally, we would establish a building maintenance program to move the market physically into the future in a safe space where it is not today. I think that was under five minutes. I'm done. All right. Um, hey, David, good to see you. I, I thank, you. thank you for taking the time to take me on a tour. I guess it was la end of last year. It was quite eye opening and um, uh, just a good good to see the work. Well, can you remind me again the governance structure of the market? It, it, is it a separate entity? And what's the kind so of So the market is governed through legislation created by the city. Um, there is a nine member board that is appointed through the mayor's office. Um, that board has a geographical and other componentry to it that's all drawn in the legislation. That legislation through the hundred years the market's been in place. So it, Technically, I represent the, Amer the Atlanta Municipal Market Corporation. Those members then are the board of directors for that corporation. Does the property or does the city own? The city owns the building and the property. We are essentially a, um, the, the, mar the corporation was created to manage the market on behalf of the city, and it has done that for the entirety of the place being there, which is 100 years. So in terms of your recommendations, um, I noticed there wasn't kind of a, no, uh, you said you're in conversations with the administration, but I noticed there wasn't kind of a, a, a complete ask in terms of what, that, it sounds like a capital infusion of some sort. Um, do you have an estimate on price tag of what that would be? <laughs> well, there's a difference between what I would think that would be. I'm working with the administration on what, that, what form that would take. So I'm hoping that we'll um, come to a good resolution. Okay. Uh, in the right. very near future. Okay. Well, I, I guess we can we can cross that bridge when we get to it. I, I would say, you know, from my perspective, give, I appreciate you putting the mission up because I do think that's important for folks to remember. I do think it's important that as, as policymakers, we have to either commit and lean into it or or not. I think that's going to be decision number one. And if we commit to it, then there's some subsequent results and investments and, and commitments that we're going to have to make as well. Um, but what I where my mind is right now, I'll just be honest with you, is if there is a one-time capital infusion, um, I would be supportive of that, but I think we would need to revisit the relationship. Like, it, is it a one-time, and then there's a transfer of the asset over to the nonprofit that then, you know, essentially has some great seed money, has um, uh, funds to bring it to where it needs to be, and then it needs to kind of be, be let to grow on its own and, and become what it needs to become versus this weird kind of tie, not weird, but it's it's just a, um, a tie back to the city. I think, I don't know, I, I, I hope that's part of the your conversation with the administration. I, I think we just got to up, uh, you know, upright it once and then kind of nudge it out the door and say, you know, um, we're, we're giving you the best we got and then it's, it's time for you all to go try and fly on your own. Yeah, I think the, um, what I would tell you is strategically for the market to thrive in whatever way it needs to thrive, the most critical first step is the city has to acknowledge that it matters. And so once the city acknowledges that it matters and invests in some way, then a lot of the doors open. And so as long as the city then makes sure that it matters, then all the other things I mentioned become real. If the city basically says it doesn't matter, then everything's really difficult. 
interesting or opportuni uh, I'm not sure what the right word is on the opportunistic in a way. I mean, the fact that y'all were right after Invest Atlanta. I mean, to me, you know, again, that y'all's missions are somewhat related in terms of promoting um, communities, businesses, food deserts, quality of life. Mm -hmm. and, so, um, and I, I hope that we lean into that uh, connection as well. So, um, but I, I appreciate the time you've invested into it, the research, the numbers, um, and that uh, um, I look forward to when y'all and the administration come back to us with kind of what, what the strategy could be going on. Thank you. Back to Gary. Thank you. Um, hey, Dave. Hello. Uh, we had, uh, thank you again for the tour last week. I really appreciate it. Um, something I also wanted to continue to clarify is that this is not supposed this is not supposed to be a revenue making machine for the city. It is a service. And so like I, I wanted to stress that again because that's something that we have discussed at length. Uh, but just wanted to draw on the fact that, I mean, I just really want to kind of dive into this agreement again with the city and how we can best prop up the municipal market. Um, as you know, this has been a long-standing cornerstone of the community. Like as you said, does everything to combat food apartheid. It is uh, something that helps has helped businesses start up, three of them, which you named here, right, Bamiya, Grindhouse, and um, Sweet Auburn Barbecue, are not, and Bell Street, four, are actually now thriving businesses in the city of Atlanta, in part, with, pretty much solely due to, I mean, their hard work ethic, but also because they were given the opportunity to begin somewhere like the municipal market. So just wanted to state for the record that you absolutely have me, uh, and I'm happy to work with members of your board, and I know that we are going to work on figuring out permitting to open up that space outside and everything else, but we need to, it is time for us to dive in a bit more and find out how we can best support the service that the city provides. Thank you. I think that it is critical to keep in mind that the businesses in the market and the ones you mentioned, they were founded through what the market provides because the traditional retail development sector does not provide them a place to go. And so all those people have jobs, all that money is generated, and that food desert is resolved because the market provides a very inexpensive way for them to do that, as opposed to the traditional $100,000, $200,000 investment you have to go into to make it into one of the food halls. In our place, it could be $10,000 or less. And so a true mom and pop small business then can be founded and thrive in a space that they could not otherwise be founded or thriving. I'm, I'm excited for us to continue working together to just do activations to revisit the lease, to do a lot of work. So I'm really, uh, it's an, an amazing presentation. The walkthrough was, was wonderful and I'm very excited for the plans that we have laid out and to work with my colleagues to figure out how we, how we find out how the city builds a more constructive relationship with the market. I'm going to be reaching out to the other members of council to ask them to come by and visit and understand the market as well. Have, Made it through four or five so far, and there's obviously ten more to go. I'll bring Councilmember Overstreet. Uh -huh. no, there you go. You too, Winnie. <laughs> we'll do a group outing there one day. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. I will say I had not been out there for a while. Last time I was there, I, I ate at Grindhouse, which has been gone for a minute. What I found interesting was in. Chair Schick, you know where Southeast Atlanta is? We, we were there <laughs> at lunchtime. And it, appearances, I guess, can be deceiving because my eyes saw a thriving, a, a thriving place of a lot of activity. There were lines in front of just about every vendor. And so it's, it's, it's startling to find out, for example, that if you pull the curtains aside, you walked into a situation that had no maintenance budget, no maintenance plan, no capital budget, no capital plan, and it had been that way for decades. So everyone was operating on this ad hoc, live in the moment, hand to mouth, sort of survival existence. And when he talks about the condition of the building, I can tell you that may not be readily apparent to just a, a casual visitor such as myself until you go down into the basement and then and that's when you really sort of say, oh, my God. Um, I think personally, and we discussed this, 
i think for you to pull off your plan which i find it you know extremely reasonable and unflinching you're going to have to get your foot in the general fund somehow some way and it's probably going to be more than one year and so I'm up for you or and or your board having that conversation with the administration. Of course, they're fashioning FY25 even as we speak. Um, and it might just be a modest start, and, but hopefully we can, it can be a kind of a regular public investment without which I, I don't see these plans really working. And then, you know, and then we'll tie that to some benchmarking that gets sorted out. I would agree. I think what uh, I've talked about with the board and everybody who will listen, and so the market didn't get the condition it's in and yesterday, and one, so it's happened over a period of time. And so it's going to take a period of time to resolve all the issues that exist, um, including just building a professional way to run the market, which has not existed in a long time. And so my advice to everybody is you would expect it's going to take three to five years to move to a new direction. Because even as you go through the city processes and other things to do things, you got to draw plans, you got to fund those plans, you got to get contractors, you get all those things are, are steps. All those steps have to be taken. And um, this is the beginning of those steps. I also just wanted to say that, you know, Pam passing unexpectedly, God rest her soul. This is not, I can't even imagine the undertaking it was to come in after having somebody that was there for so many years, for more than two decades, that, you know, in, in this space and to come over and take that over without even, you know, having all the knowledge systems in place, records, et cetera. So I just really want to commend you, the board, the staff, you know, the people that are, the vendors that are there, everybody, but you especially on, on this. This is not an easy task, and I, I think you are doing a fantastic job. And thank you for that comment. I think the the market is absolutely worth doing well, and I think it's been ignored for a long time, but it's absolutely worth doing well. And I will reach out to you. Have my word that I'll reach out to my colleagues and, and work on getting them there for a tour. Yeah, I think I think it's that's super important. I think once you go there yeah, and, nice. and hit the tour and you show them around and tell them the kind of the bad news, I think there's only going to be one response, and that's to get people you know fired up because as everyone has noted, this is not supposed to turn a profit. It, it's a public good, um, and we either consider it important or we don't and I know everyone's going to consider it important who certainly who goes out there but uh, thanks for coming thank you very much council and good luck uh, I'll, I'll be inviting everyone else for the tour thank you all right that takes us to a, a our first communication 24 c 5041 a communication from members uh, Hillis Boone Collier Overstreet Lewis and Waits uh, appointing Ms. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Hollister to serve as a member of the City of Atlanta Procurement Reform Task Force. And is she here? Come on up, please. How are you? Hi, doing well. I'm Elizabeth. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, why you look forward to being on this. Great. Um, I'm Elizabeth Hollister. I'm the executive director of the Upper West Side Community Improvement District. And um, we are a special governmental entity that was created by City Council uh, in 2016. And um, we uh, run procurements uh, for engineering and construction services, um, um, often uh, using public funds, so following city or state or federal procurement guidelines. Um, and so I've been in this role for about eight years. Um, before that, went to um, grad school at, or at Georgia Tech for urban planning. Um, and then previous, prior to that was in software sales, so not particularly pertinent to this role. Big results uh, coming out of this review, Mr. Hillis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Ms. Hollister, um, for your willingness to serve, work with uh, Elizabeth uh, and the West Side, Upper West Side CID uh, since I came on to council in 2018. Uh, so thank you, sir, very well in this role. You've seen uh, the best and the worst of the inner workings of, of the city and procurement and, and projects and have taken on many projects yourself. Uh, the CID has, uh, thankfully. So 
one of which is on our agenda today for a BMA. So uh, looking forward to seeing the work of this committee. And so I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. All right, second by Ms. Silverstreet, motion by Hillis. If there's something else, let's open the vote, please. Vote is open. Vote is closed. All right, the ayes have it. It's awarded. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. That takes us to 24C5042. This is a communication from Mayor Dickens appointing uh, Mr. N. John Bay Esquire to serve as a member of the City of Atlanta Procurement Task Force. And there you are. How are you? Tell us a little Good. Good afternoon. I'm John Bay. I, I have a law firm here in Atlanta, uh, Bay & Associates. We also have offices in Ohio and Louisiana. But of course, this is home, and I am honored to be nominated to be on this committee. All right, president-elect of Gate City Bar Association, I see. I'm, I'm the actual president at this point, um, and I'm in line to be president of the Georgia Trial Lawyers Association. Wow, okay. Comment? <laughs> uh, uh, Thank you very much for your willingness to serve. And I was going to ask the same thing. I was wondering why you didn't mention that you were the current president of the Gay Bar Association. So I'm glad that did come out um, because you are doing us a huge honor and favor Thank by you. being uh, putting yourself up for service. So move approval. Second. Approval by Thank Collins. you so much. Over yes. uh, Second by Hillis. Let's open the vote. Vote is open. Vote is closed. All right, the ayes have it. Thank right. you very much. Thank you all so much. I look forward to serving. 24R3287 is a resolution by Ms. Bakhtiari to reappoint Ms. Daniel Hampton to the City of Atlanta Audit Committee as one of the three at-large members appointed by the entire City Council said term to begin upon approval of this resolution and for other purposes. Um, while I don't expect any issues with this, uh, we have not uh, heard back from Ms. Hampton yet, and so we need to we need to do that. So I will second Ms. Bakhtiari's motion to hold. Thank you. Vote is open. Will everyone please vote? Vote is closed. All right, item is held. Thank you. Could you sound our first reads? Yes. Item number 4-2401131, an ordinance by Finance Executive Committee on behalf of the Atlanta Department of Transportation to amend 170707, adopted by the Council on January 6, 2020, and approved by operation of law on January 15, 2020, to authorize the Chief Procurement Officer to issue purchase orders under the Georgia Department of Transportation grant agreement for all of the parts of the legislation to remain unchanged. Item number five, and 32 is an ordinance, ordinance 1286 adopted by the Atlanta City Council on June 20, 2023 and approved by the mayor on June 26, 2023 to authorize adding the funding and the Atlanta Department of Corrections for the purposes. All right. Thank you. Those are first reads. We will take them, them up at our next sitting. That takes us to uh, section J, ordinances for second reading. I'm going to take our three budget items as a block, sound the captions, and obviously we will need to hold them for now. 2401099 is an ordinance by uh, Finance Exec to amend the code section indicated here to set the ad valorem tax rate for the general levy, bonded indebtedness levy, parks levy, education levy, special tax district levy, uh, and the Atlanta Beltline Special Service District levy uh, based on Every one thousand dollars and zero cents, or a part thereof, the value of all real estate and real and personal property uh, to provide the tax rates established herein shall remain fixed, until amended or repealed, uh, to repeal ordinance blank and for other purposes. Uh, our next budget item is 2401100, ordinance by Finance Exec to set the ad valorem tax rate for the general levy, bonded indebtedness levy, parks levy, education levy, special tax district levy. Uh, in the Atlanta uh, Beltline Special Service District levy based on every $1,000 uh, or part thereof 
of the value of real and personal property to provide that tax rates established herein shall remain fixed until amended or repealed and for other purposes. Uh, and finally, 2401101 uh, is an ordinance by finance exec adopting the FY25 proposed budget to include all funds and for other purposes. Motion is to hold. A second by Ms. Bakhtiari. Let's open that vote. Vote is open. Vote is closed. All right, these items will be held. Uh, 2401103 requires a substitute. Uh, let me read the substitute. Caption the substitute. Uh, this is a substitute ordinance by Finance Exec authorizing the City of Atlanta to waive the competitive procurement source selection provisions contained in the city code section indicated, as well as any other conflicting code provisions to execute an amendment for the FC indicated. Public safety systems operations and services uh, at Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport with Dean ALLPSS LLC on behalf of the Department of Aviation to extend the term on a month to month basis for a period of up to six months beginning March fifth of this year to expire on or before September 20, uh, September 4 of this year in an amount not to exceed $1,500,000. All services will be charged to and paid from the account numbers listed uh, here in. So I'll make a motion to bring the substitute before us. Second by Hillis. Let's open that vote. Vote is open. Vote is closed. The substitute is before you. All right, substitutes before us, uh, Ms. Smith. Good afternoon, Michael Smith, Deputy General Manager. Uh, this paper allows us to do an extension for six months for our public safety security systems. This is an agreement that covers all of our access doors, our uh, AED machines, and other CCTV cameras. Uh, we are in the procurement stage uh, for the replacement and we'll have it done uh, within the six month period. Uh, substitute extends the term from six to nine months, correct? Yeah, from I, I, originally it was nine months, but working with uh, procurement, we could do it um, a little bit quicker. Questions, comments? I'll make my motion to approve on substitute. Second by Ms. Collier Overstreet. Nothing else? Let's open the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. You guys have it. Let's take a Some carry forward uh, and donation papers. Let's take 10, 13, and 14 as a block. Uh, an ordinance. Well, this is 2401111. This is an ordinance by Shook. <clears throat> authorizing a donation in an amount not to exceed $1,000 to the Atlanta Preservation Center from the Council President's distribution account to support their Phoenix Files celebration uh, pursuant to the code section here uh, and for other purposes. by Ms. Collier Overstreet authorizing a donation in the amount of not to exceed $5,000 from the District 11 Carry Forward account to the Alfred Tuck Homes Legacy Foundation, Inc., pursuant to the listed code section. And 14 is 2401117, an ordinance by uh, Ms. Bakhtiari and Mr. Westmoreland to amend the code, uh, to amend ordinance 2401052, which was adopted by Council February 19th of this year, to correct the organization's name from Atlanta Friday night. Second by Ms. Collier Oak Street. If there's nothing else, let's open the vote. The vote is open.
stop this car now. Oh, they did actually. And what was it? The item was, um, all three items were favorable. Thank you. All right, 2401112, as substitute, let me read the proposed substitutes caption. It's an ordinance by Shook, is substituted by Finance Check, to request the issuance by the Atlanta Urban Redevelopment Agency of its revenue bonds and the Transportation uh, Facility Series 2024 in the aggregate principal amount not to exceed $35 million to assist with financing the cost constructing, renovating, and equipping certain municipal facilities, um, improvement projects for public buildings and public facilities, and certain transportation projects located within the Atlanta Urban Redevelopment Area Number 1, including electrical upgrades, also exterior lighting upgrades, and HVAC and AV equipment upgrades, also non-emergency customer relationship management system upgrades, the renovations of human resources department offices, also elevator modernization and HVAC lighting and security improvements to certain city facilities uh, and department offices, uh, and wayfinding and shared street activations, traffic calming, uh, and sidewalk and curb ramps, collectively known as the project, uh, authorizing the execution, delivery, and performance of an intergovernmental contract on personal agreement continuing disclosure agreement and related documents and certificates authorizing the execution of an acknowledgement of service uh, and filing of an answer on behalf of the city and validation of proceedings relating to the series 2024 bonds, authorizing the preparation use and distribution of a preliminary official statement, an official statement in connection with the sale of the 2024 bonds by the agency, including a designated officer of the city to quote, deem, five, deem final end quote, the preliminary official statement for purposes of securities and exchange commission rule indicated uh, in approving the city of Atlanta amended and restated urban redevelopment plan and for other purposes moved to bring the substitute forward. Uh, second by Mr. Wan. Let's open that vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Substitute is before you. All right. The substitute is before us. And who is presenting? Doctor? Good afternoon. Tina Wilson, Deputy CFO. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me better? Can you hear? I'll talk louder. Okay. The bonds are being sold to finance improvements to a variety of facilities in City Hall and other municipal facilities as well as transportation. The projects are all located within the footprint of the urban redevelopment area as established in the amended and restated urban redevelopment plan as of March 2024. A public hearing was held last week at the urban redevelopment agency to hear any amendments to the redevelopment plan, including the adoption of these projects to the plan. The projects include a total of approximately 26 million that um, Dean will manage. Um, they include uh, city hall facilities, um, the HR renovation that you mentioned earlier, um, a lot of the um, completion of the restacking projects in the tower and um, on the tower side from 2010, 2017 and before, as well as ATL DOT about 6.4 million there related to transportation projects for safety and pedestrian improvements. The current bond sizing is approximately 30 million, including amounts necessary for cost of issuance and underwriters discount. We're able to finance these 32 million of projects with a $30 million bond issue assuming current market conditions, which lead us to believe that the bonds can be sold at a premium. However, we're seeking authorization for not to exceed authorization of up to 35 million in order to have the flexibility to price the bonds at a discount should the market so require on the day that we price the bonds. Um, the upcoming uh, bond pricing schedule is around the week of April 17th. Of course, we'll bring back a uh, pricing ordinance and have the
this because I don't see this moving forward. <laughs>
document. Um, but if we just get a list that has some generalized, oh, we're going to throw some money at this and throw some money at that, doesn't have locations. Because I've been asking for locations on the $10 million we threw in to moving Atlanta forward uh, for over a year now, and I've gotten this. If that is what is coming to us as the condition, then I would be voting no on Monday anyway. So. All right. Any other questions or comments, Ms. Spector? Yeah. One, one other. <laughs> one other thing is uh, I just should I just turn this off. I would, uh, I would say, I want to, like, I also want to stress, like, Dr. Wilson, you know that I think you're absolutely brilliant, as is the entire finance team, and I understand the need for it, and I'm not trying in any way to be obstinate. It just feels like we're, we have been sinking into a pattern of, like, a really large truck drives by and you can't hear anything. Um, so I was thinking my point being is I'm, I am, I am worried about getting, continuing the pattern of rushing large amounts of sums to the point that he was saying, is there a way to do this more sustainably? But I'm also trying to be cognizant of the fact that I forgot that we do have recess. And so I know that it could be a longer period of time. So I guess I, I, I'm asking you again with the questions raised here, what are your thoughts in terms of the concerns that have been raised and what Councilman Juan stated in terms of revenue sourcing and knowing how here understanding you and the importance that is being drawn here but understanding that holding for a cycle wouldn't would be longer than a cycle because of recess that would be a month so I want to ask you what your thoughts are thank you I appreciate that um, and and not personally offended by it um, I do think we address a lot of your questions in the document the, the project detail list is there um, we're comfortable moving moving the, the paper forward, obviously, with um, bringing it up for it today for the reasons I stated. One is the timing. Does a couple weeks um, challenge us? Yes. It doesn't. It may not um, kill, kill the idea, um, but it does put a, a tremendous challenge on uh, the operating budgets. They're already having pro trouble today. Um, so this does help get them help them find out that goal. Um, philosophically, I think, um, number one, about including, including the transportation project here is, is um, either a discussion for um, around just the policy around adding the transportation pro projects here, um, whether it's the right financing mechanism. I, I'm sure it's a valid question. I, I um, appreciate that. Um, but I don't think this precludes us from, from adding it here. Um, if there are any specific questions about the transportation projects, we have, uh, I believe, the commissioner some earlier. He's he's here to answer any specifics around that. But I think fundamentally around the um, policy, whether we add it here, or not, we're op we're we finance are fine with it, um, and and we would be um, accommodating either way. Ms. Collier, yeah. So I think that um, in listening to uh, colleague Juan, uh, there is something that we could be doing in two weeks in looking at maybe di this requires two different sets of legislation. I'm not sure. Did you hear me, Council? Did you hear me? I, I said that it sounds like we could be do some, doing something in two weeks, and it may require, and I don't, I don't know. I'm just asking. I'm walking through it like everyone else. It may require us to do two separate pieces of legislation, one that is time, time sensitive, um, because I understand what, what you're saying as well, um, and certainly want to see that work done uh, from the elevator, from the top to the bottom over um, at, at that area. So, um, and I'm, I'm totally supportive of it. I just want to make sure that um, I, I did not notice uh, an add-on of transportation items, although I do know that they're there, um, which I'm fine with until we had this conversation today. So I'm trying to figure out 
you know, there may be a way for us to do both, but they won't all be under the bond. You know, because they require different um, times and for different reasons. Long term is what I'm saying. It's as far as finance uh, responsibility it's, it's a little different for both, I think. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, I, but I will say the, um, you know, including the transportation projects was a, um, a, an exercise we did go through to consider as part of this project. Um, there are uh, a number of projects that get brought to us to vet when we're thinking about doing a financing. Some of some of them on the list are longer, and some were emergency, you know, sort of situations. So we try to we work with the team, we work with the other um, operating departments to make sure that um, they're prioritized. There is a need for sure for um, these transportation projects around uh, prioritization as well. Um, they're also in, in, there is a pathway because they're included in the um, in the map of the redevelopment area, and uh, the timing works fairly well because of um, doing an issuance. Um, Cost-wise, doing a doing an issuance is helpful to have, um, you know, this size issuance as opposed to, you know, splitting something up or doing something later. The size of the the issuance matters, and so this is helpful for us to package it this way. Okay. Um, okay. Because you know. In the finance world right now, understanding that things are probably more expensive today than they will be in the next five years. I mean, we do know that. Um, I, I just want to make sure that we are, you know, uh, crafting legislation that is most efficient for right this moment. So, um, I don't know. What's, what motion is on the floor now? Is it a hold or is, what, where are we? It's a... Okay. So I yield the floor. I'm still thinking. Mr. Wan. All right. So I'm going to withdraw my second. I'm going to withdraw my motion. We're going to, I want to support the motion to move it forward with no recommendation, understanding that the, between now and Monday, we have the option potentially of striking the transportation piece out and then going forward with a bond that covers the facilities on Monday. Um, not ideal, but it, it is a, a kind of a, a path forward that allows us to address the really critical buildings issue while we have us, uh, more time to talk about the transportation infrastructure because we also, again, just reminding us, we also have the opportunity to bake those into the, the general fund budget, um, given it's only six million dollars, so or seven million dollars. So I, I think, you know, we, we've got time to hash that out. So I'll, I'll support the motion to move it forward, no recommendation on condition. All right. In that case, we're back to Mr. Hillis's original motion which was to send it forward with no recommendation on condition of receiving a detailed project list, detailed project list. Um, and then that'll also, that'll also give us time to review the other supporting materials. All right. So if there's nothing else, let's open the vote on that motion. Vote is open. But the ayes have it. That takes us to 24 11 14. It's an ordinance by Ms. Collier Overstreet waiving the code section indicated here of the procurement and real estate code of the city to authorize the mayor or his designee to execute contracts with vendors, performers, artists, venues, and vendors necessary to effectuate the city's land's honoring of the anniversary of the inauguration of former Mayor Maynard Jackson to authorize the city to accept donations in an amount not to exceed $200,000 for the purpose of supporting the city's um, actions related to the 50th celebration through December 31st of this year to authorize all costs to be paid from and all revenue and donations to be deposited into the Civic and Cultural Event Trust Fund account listed and for other purposes. Chief of Staff, good afternoon. How you doing? All righty. 
Good afternoon. How you doing? Good deal. Well, listen, I think you're aware. And well, first, I'll just apologize because I know this noise piece has been extremely aggravating to our council and it's kind of prohibited you and caused some issue with you uh, conducting your daily business. We do have our comms team coming to make this a little bit uh, easier for you. I think uh, council member Shook, a chairman Shook, uh, highlighted that they'll be coming tomorrow to do a temporary fix, but while you're away uh, on your recess, we should be able to have the issue fully resolved, if not before. So I'll start with that because I know this is extremely aggravating and, and a little bit out of your control and definitely not your fault. So I wanted to highlight that. Uh, I'll just give you a quick update because I think we're taking these two items together. Uh, excited that Atlanta continues to be the host city of the South and uh, bringing some really cool things to Atlanta. One of them is the AMA conference, the African American Mayors Conference, where we expect three or four hundred mayors from around the country uh, to be able to uh, enjoy our great city, have some great content, but also really tackle some of the major issues that we're facing uh, around the country. Uh, in addition to that, Maynard 50, you know, one of our greatest mayors and, and one of uh, the nation's greatest mayors will be celebrating all year long. We've already had uh, some events in both January and February and we'll continue those throughout uh, the year. But uh, we also want to make sure that as we raise money and accept funds, we do so in a very transparent manner. So our ask today allows us to be able to put systems in place that keep us on the right side of uh, the laws and ordinances that you put in place, but also allow us to give our citizens as well as those guests coming to the city an extraordinary experience. So if you've got any questions, I'd gladly answer those. Thank you. Second by one. There's nothing else. Let's open the vote. Thank you very much. That takes us to 2401118. Needs a substitute. Let me read the substitute. dollars from the district three carry forward account to the district three expense account authorizing the transfer of twenty thousand dollars from the district 12 carry forward account to the district 12 expense account authorizing the transfer of thirty thousand dollars from the post one at large salaries permanent part-time account to the post one at large expense account authorizing the transfer of ten thousand dollars from the post two at large carry forward account to the post two at large distribution account and for other purposes. Uh, I will make a motion to bring the substitute forward. Second by Ms. Bakhtiari, let's open the vote. Vote is closed, substitute is before you. Questions or comments? Motion to approve by Collier Overstreet, which uh, has been seconded by Mr. Wan. If there's something else, let's open that vote. Vote is open. Vote is closed. If the ayes have it, item is accepted on substitute. That takes us to uh, 2401126. This is an ordinance by Mr. Amos and Mr. Hillis, waiving the code sections indicated here authorizing the mayor or his designee on behalf of the city of Atlanta to enter into a lease agreement with Chattahoochee Works LLC for the lease of office space consisting of 1,682 rentable square feet located at 500 Chattahoochee Row, uh, suite 500B2 uh, in Atlanta, Georgia for a term of 120 months commencing on March 1st of this year and ending uh, February 28th of 2034 at a minimum annual rental rate of $1,682 plus operating expenses 
authorizing expenditure to be charged to and paid from uh, the accounts listed here. I'm not sure who's presenting. a motion by Juan to approve, second by Hillis. Uh, if there's nothing else, let's go ahead and open that vote. All right, the ayes have it. Um, item is approved. All right, which one did I skip, Ms. Kempson Wright? Item number 16, but I have to No, I don't, I don't think that's necessary. Okay, so item 16 is 2411.20. This is a, an ordinance by Mr. Winston, waiving the code section indicated um, to execute contracts with sponsors, performers, artists, venues, and vendors necessary to effectuate the City of Atlanta's hosting of the African American Mayor's Association's 10th Annual Conference to authorize the City of Atlanta to accept donations in an amount not to exceed $200,000 for the purpose of supporting the City's actions related to African American Mayor's Association's Conference through December 31st of this year. Um, to authorize all costs be paid from and all revenue and donations be deposited into the Civic and Cultural Event Trust Fund account listed and for other purposes. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second by Juan. If there's no questions. Let's open that vote. Vote is open. Vote is closed. At the ayes have it. So is, is there anyone here to speak to the Chattahoochee paper? 18. 24R3296, resolution by finance exec, uh, asking marriage designee to enter into renewal number three with RICO USA Inc. Uh, via state of Georgia contract, number of which is indicated here. For multifunctional copiers on behalf of the Atlanta City Council in an amount not to exceed $22,793.77, all contracted work shall be charged to and paid from uh, the accounts listed. I'll make a motion to approve. Second by one. If there's no questions, let's open that vote. Vote is open. The ayes have it. 24R3297 is a resolution by finance exec authorizing the mayor as designee to execute a sole source agreement, the number of which is indicated with uh, Metasis, Metasis Controls, uh, with Johnson Controls, Inc. on behalf of the Department of Enterprise Assets Management, pursuant to the code section indicated here for a term of two years in an amount not to exceed $114,090.11, all contracted work being charged to and paid from, et cetera. Mr. Davis. Good afternoon, Council Chair, other members of the committee. Uh, Chris Davis, the Interim Commissioner of the Department of Enterprise Assets Management. You know, the purpose of this legislation is to enter into an agreement uh, sole source with Johns Control for their medicine systems, which is a proprietary piece of equipment that we use to control and monitor our equipment. Moved by one, uh, which a second has been seconded by Bakhtiari. Let's open that vote. Vote is open. Vote 
Vote is closed. All right, the ayes have it. 24R3298 is a resolution by Finance Exec authorizing the mayor or his designee to issue the, a task order number, which is listed here, citywide architectural planning, design, engineering, and construction phase services, group A small with uh, Praxis 3 and J.W. Robinson, joint venture uh, for development of a public land activation strategy on behalf of DEEM in an amount not to exceed $227,650 all work to be charged to and paid from, et cetera, Mr. Davis. Yes, again, this uh, that piece of legislation is for planning, actually, so that they can develop a master plan to address uh, city-owned property to help in their preparation of uh, affordable housing planning moving forward. Uh, Mr. Wong, go ahead. I'll, I'll move approval. I do have a question, though. What the time frame when when will the report or findings be available it's, it's, this is ready to go now so all of the things are in place so they're looking to do this over the next three months so we get a, a report back in 90 days Th that's the plan that's so that's what we ask them to do by one on which i will second there's something else let's open the vote vote is open Yeah, have it. And lastly, Mr. Davis, you have 24R3299, uh, resolution by Finance Exec, authorizing the mayor or his designee to issue the task order number of which is indicated to pay for licenses for the Department of Finance slash Office of Revenue Renovations under the contract indicated job order contracting consulting services with the Gordian Group, Inc., on behalf of DEEM in an amount not to exceed 54000 Four hundred eighty-nine dollars and three cents. All contracted work will be charged to and paid from, etc. Uh, again, the purpose of this legislation is to, to to pay the fee for the Gordian services, uh, which is to develop the scoping and to monitor the the, the costs associated with the project. Approved by one, second by Hillis. If there's nothing else. Let's open that vote. Vote is open. Vote is closed. The ayes have it. 24R3354 is a resolution by Finance Exec to call a special election to fill the vacancy in the office of council, mem of council member for Atlanta City Council Post 3 at large to provide for a qualification fee and uh, qualification period and fee, therefore, to provide for notice thereof in the official organs of Fulton and DeKalb counties and in the newspaper general circulation in the city and for other purposes. Moved by one. Uh, any questions or comments? Seeing none, let's open the vote. Please. Vote is open. The vote is closed. The ayes have it. Any duels before us today? No. That takes us to um, the first of our two proposed held items to move. First of which is item 45. That is 24R3252 and I will read the caption of the proposed substitute. This is a resolution by Shook, a substitute by Finance Exec, authorizing the commissioner of the Department of Watershed Management to adjust water and sewer service charges on certain customer accounts in accordance with the Atlanta City Code section listed here in the amount of $205,836.63 and for other purposes. Um, I will move approval. Oh, no, motion to bring the substitute before us. Second by Bakhtiari. Let's open that vote. Open. All right, substitute is, is now before us. I'll make a motion to approve on substitute. Second by Mr. Wan. Let's open the vote. Vote is open. Is closed. All right, the ayes have it. Item's been adopted 
on substitute. Uh, item 46 is 24R3253. Uh, we need a substitute for that. Let me read the caption. Well, substitute resolution by Shook is substituted by Finance Exec, authorizing the CFO to refund customers for overpayments to water and sewer accounts in the amount of $139,263.11. All funds to be charged to and paid from, et cetera. A motion to bring the substitute forward. Second by Juan. Let's open that vote. Vote is open. Vote is closed. Substitutes before us. I'll make a motion to approve on substitute. Second by Juan. Let's open the vote. Vote is open. Item's been adopted on substitute. Anything else? Any uh, remarks, announcements? Seeing none, we are adjourned.